G'day guys and gal. After the pretty bloody good response to last video, our dive into the land of great big surprisingly interesting disabled mechas continues. This time we move more towards the different types of dreadnoughts, and boy oh boy is there a solid variety, like an obnoxious amount of variety, due to the fact that some people consider a dreadnought occupied by a space wolf to be a completely different type of dreadnought than if it was occupied by a blood angel, or if the two dreadnoughts had different weapons, even if the model of the dreadnought was identical. Fortunately, I'm not a complete retard like those people, hence each dreadnought I mention on this list will be unique and interesting. Before we get started, there are like two or three days until the end of the year, and we only need 1,000 more subscribers to hit that legendary 150k mark. As I mentioned before, if we do achieve that goal before the end of the year, then I will pay a hot chick to dress up in a sexy Warhammer outfit and throw it on Patreon. So if you like Warhammer and chicks and real life hentai, then hit that subscribe button. It would really blush me up. Today we'll go over all the main Dreadnought types, describing who uses them, how powerful they are, and other cool little fun facts about them. I will be including Chaos Dreadnoughts on this list as well. Let's get into it. If you haven't been living under a rock or in your mum's basement, actually living in your mum's basement probably helps with this, then you probably know what a dreadnought is. But me having faith in my viewers' mental capacity is like having faith that people from Alabama can tell the difference between their cousin and potential sexual partners. It's better just to tell them to be safe. A dreadnought is every disabled kid's wet dream. Giant walking life support systems of death that are piloted by some seriously quadriplegic nugget looking space marines. Basically, when a powerful marine is severely wounded in combat and on the brink of death, they can be interred into a dreadnought in order to keep them fighting for the Imperium. Hence the famous dready quote of, even in death, I still serve. Their new situation as the Dreadnought often makes them all quite dry and cynical, can't say I blame them, but it also makes them extremely powerful, with Dreadnoughts having been seen to take on greater demons, hive tyrants, and even primarchs. Personally, I think Dreadnoughts might be a little bit too overpowered. Seems like they take the what doesn't kill you makes you stronger a bit too literally, and it always makes me chuckle imagining that a literal soggy Darth Vader looking bitch floating around in a life support system can rip off a legendary demon's head or make Magnus the Red look like a bitch. Not that that's very difficult, but you know what I mean. Now that we know what a base level Dreadnought is, let's look at the different types. First up is the Venerable Dreadnought, which is basically just an old as shit standard veteran Dreadnought. Their immense power doesn't come from their weapons or armor though, it comes from their knowledge on how to maximize being a Dreadnought. See, there is quite a steep learning curve from when a Marine is blown up and put in a Dreddy versus actually being good at being a Dreddy. Venerables are good at being Dreddies. Due to their age, which is often in the thousands, they are also keepers of their chapter's knowledge and traditions. They tell their chapter's stories and basically make sure the newer generation of Marines don't act like a bunch of fuckwits. A really well-known venerable dreadnought is Bjorn the Fell Handed, a space wolf who is over 10,000 years old and fought side by side with Lehman Rust during the Great Crusade and Horus Heresy. Bjorn is a literal god of war and beat the ever-living shit out of Magnus the Red, with Magnus only surviving due to his demonic prince bullshit hacks. A trade-off to being a venerable dreadnought is that the older they get, the less active they are, hence they become like little legendary Pokemon that are kept in Pokeballs until their chapter needs them most. Next up is the Siege Dreadnought, which, you guessed it, specializes in sieges. It's quite similar to your normal Dreddy, other than its weapons and bulkier frontal armor. It has a drill in one hand to bore its way through enemy fortifications, and an extremely volatile flamethrower on the other called an Inferno Cannon. The idea is this is the first dude to burst a hole in a wall, while the rest of his squad shouts, Grom, 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 from behind. Once there is a hole in said wall, Whatever is behind the wall gets incinerated. A notable Siege Dreadnought is Brother Darius, who was a member of the Red Scorpions chapter and took part in the Siege of Vrax, penetrating many traitors with his deadly assault drill. Similar to the Siege Dreadnought now, we have the Ironclad, which is the most heavily armored Dreadnought there is, but one I'll mention later, and fulfills a similar role to the Siege Dreddy, although they are a bit less specific and can be used in a wider variety of situations. They swap out the assault drill for a systemic hammer, so instead of drilling a hole in the wall, they smack the wall until the wall is no longer. They also support a large amount of rockets and a couple cheeky flamethrowers. A notable ironclad dready is Valoris, an imperial fist that is credited with over 1,000 confirmed bunker kills. That doesn't mean he's killed 1,000 people that were in a bunker, that means he's killed 1,000 bunkers. Onto a more exciting name, we have the Hellfire Dreadnoughts, who swap out all their drills and hammers for a ton of long-range weaponry. 
One of its arms will always be a missile launcher, which sucks if it's targeting you, and the other hand will be whatever else the Dreddy likes as long as it's not a close quarter combat weapon. Examples of this secondary weapon include an assault cannon, twin linked LAS cannons, twin linked auto cannons, a plasma cannon, a multi melter, or twin linked heavy bolters. Yeah, these guys pack a serious fucking punch. When your secondary weapon is two heavy bolter guns strapped together, your caliber is off the scale. A notable Hellfire Dreddy includes Aegis, who is a captain of the Ultramarine Second Company. The Ultramarines are notorious for loving their Hellfire Dreadnoughts, cause why wouldn't you use this death machine? Next up is a bit of a unicorn, and by that I mean extremely rare, the Contemptor Dreadnought. These are some of the only dreadnoughts that look like they're actually fun to pilot. They're a lot faster and agile than the common boxy boys and pack a bigger punch with cooler technology. So why don't we see these mechas more often? Well, because like everything cool in Warhammer, the knowledge to build these guys has been lost for thousands of years. They were popular during the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy. Due to the dreadnoughts tendencies to be on the front lines of every conflict, almost every contempt or dready was destroyed. There was a huge variety of contempts back in the day, as well as each legion pretty much having their own unique variants, but considering they barely even know how to repair these guys anymore, having a contempt or dready in your chapter is a huge flex. One dready that isn't a unicorn however is the new Primaris Redemptor Dreadnought, which is like a middle point between the common bulky box dreadies that we all know and love and the slick but nearly extinct Comptentor Dreddies. The Redemptors are bigger, faster and stronger than their old counterparts. I mean, they are Primaris so it's pretty much a given that they have to be technically better. However, just like the fatal flaw of a Primaris, that being that the Primaris Marines are a bunch of douchebags, the Redemptor has an incredibly shit design flaw. That flaw being that the pilots of the Redemptors burn out quite quickly due to the complexity of the machine. So yeah, we won't be getting any venerable Redemptors, I don't think. I believe this was done by GW so that they could make Primaris somewhat grimdark, as well as not make the old Dreadnought models and characters instantly obsolete. A notable Redemptor is Brother Cassian, who was a Primaris who was horrified and ashamed to wake up in a Dreadnought after winning a Pyrrhic victory. Then Gilliman was like, bro, don't feel bad. You're an absolute legend. Now let's blast some tits off some heretics. And then Cassian felt proud for a bit uh, then disintegrated or some shit. I, I don't know how long people last in Redemptors. Next up is the Dorito Dreadnought, which while it sounds like a delicious Mexican corn chip, is much better than that. This dude makes the Hellfire Dreddy look like a pea shooter as it stomps around as a mobile weapons platform. The trade-off for such a beast is that it's extremely expensive to make and wouldn't do so hot in a Michael Bay tier melee fight. As such, these boys are incredibly rare, but if you have one, then you can say sayonara to the bad guys from ages away. Tell me, what's more OP than a wizard? A space marine wizard. Now what's more OP than a space marine wizard? A dreadnought wizard. Yes, that's a thing as I now introduce the librarian dreadnought. Not much to say here other than fighting these guys suck. The best part about fighting psychers is, is they usually don't have a helmet on, so a solid snipe to their faces does wonders, but the librarian dreadies are a walking helmet. They wield two close quarter weapons, one of these being a gigantic force blade, as they stumble around shooting death lightning at people. The Librarian Dreadnoughts are more or less exclusive to the Blood Angels, but I don't really see why other chapters can't use them unless I'm missing something obvious, which I usually am. A famous Librarian Dreadnought was Galen, who pretty much single-handedly discovered the weakness to an overpowered demonic incursion, then personally destroyed said weakness and stopped a fuck huge army of spiky wankers. Librarian Dreadnought OP. Similar logic of the Librarian Dreadnought, we now have the Chaplain Dreadnoughts. To me, Chaplains are just space marines with cooler one-liners and armor, which I would say extends to their Dreadnought variant. Like, it's a cool looking dready, and whilst I'm a big believer in the rule of cool, that's pretty much where their uniqueness ends, which is, which is fine, but, but yeah. A notable Chaplain dready is Bacharath, who fought hard against the Orcs in the War of the Beast and was killed in a duel with the Daddy of All Greenskins. Dreadnoughts are overkill, and that's why we love them. Nothing embodies this more than the Leviathan Dreadnought, which is one of the only Dreadnoughts to be built by the Emperor on Terra, rather than on Mars by the Mechanicum. As with all things the Emperor makes, it was overkill. The Leviathans are huge and armored and powerful. Unfortunately, that means that the strain on the pilot's mind is pretty huge, and often drives them insane. 
meaning the deployment of a Leviathan Dreadnought is the deployment of a giant metal berserker. I guess the Emperor thought the Black Rage was going to be pretty cool and trendy, and he wanted to be able to copy it over to the other legions. A notable Leviathan is Karab Kalin, who was the chapter master of the Red Scorpions until he got blown up and placed in a Dreadnought. It is said that only a chapter master can authorize the use of a Leviathan Dreddy, so it's fun to see Karab authorizing himself to ruin a heretic's day. No one knows how to make leviathans anymore, and even less people want to pilot them, so seeing these beasts is a pretty rare sight. Now I did say I wanted to avoid chapter specific dreadies, but this one is too gaggy to ignore. The Wolfen Dreadnought. Just like how the Blood Angels have their Black Rage, the Space Wolves have their Wolfen, which are fairy werewolf berserkers that the Space Wolves can mutate into. Occasionally this mutation happens while the Space Wolf is in a Dreadnought, creating large mecha werewolves that eat ass and take names, or however that saying goes. This just really takes home the point that Dreadnoughts are just a complete upgrade of what they were before. Like, damn, this image of this wolf and Dreddy shows them surrounded by a bunch of dead Rubik Marines, who themselves are incredibly powerful. Dreadnoughts are not just unique to Space Marines, the Custodes also have a number of their own. The greatest of these are called the Telemon Heavy Dreadnoughts, which look awesome. They were the one-man armies, only the best of the best Custodes were worthy of piloting them, and when they were piloted, it was a pretty quick GGEZ. A well-known Telemon Dreddy was Deberek Kalimikon, who was a legend among the Custodes. He was poisoned in battle with a virus that made his flesh fall from his bones, and despite that, he continued to fight for 18 hours straight before being placed in a stasis pod. He was returned to Terra, where they chucked him in a Telemon Dreadnought, continuing his reign of terror against the enemies of the Imperium. Imagine being the demon who poisoned him. You'd be like, Hueh hueh hueh, I have slain a Custodes and then said Custodes reappears and kills your friends, family, cats, dogs, and mouse. You'd be like, bruh. You'd pretty much be on the same level of whoopsies as the guy who killed Batman's parents. The last and definitely least, because fucking chaos sucks, are the Chaos Dreddies. Now most of the above Dreddies have a Chaos counterpart, but Chaos do have a couple unique Dreddies to themselves. As being put in a Chaos Dreadnought sucks mega dick, because it's extremely painful and torturous, the traders don't field as many Dreddies. They do have Hellbrutes though, which is basically when a Chaos Dreddy gets infused with some bad warp voodoo and turns into a batshit insane demi-demon who is chained up between fights because of how loose they are. A bit more of a fun Dreddy is the Sonic Dreadnought, which is when a Noise Marine gets Dreadnoughtified. It's like a normal noise marine, but way bigger speakers. Dreadnoughts come in all shapes and sizes, with different abilities and weapons, but the one thing they all have in common is they will shit on your tits and there is nothing you can do about it. And that does us for today, guys, all the main Dreadnought types. There are others, but I want to make this a 45 minute video because I have to talk about a Dreadnought who has a different name because his left nut is bigger than his right one. If you enjoyed the video and want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be, where only $1 per month give you access to a boatload of Warhammer Hentai. And due to the success of last video, that will include Dreadnought Hentai soon, which I'm not sure what they will look like, but there we go. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more boxy content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.